thank you for the Holy Spirit. We ask that the Holy Spirit would dwell in this place. Lord, sometimes we hear things that we've never heard before, but we are asking that our hearts would be ready to receive. We're living in the last days, and we know that Jesus is soon to come. And we all want to be ready. We want to know the truth, because we know the truth will set us free. So fill us with thy Holy Spirit. If any evilness is in the walls of this place, we ask that you would remove it right now and let thy Holy Spirit dwell in this place. Thank you for hearing and answering our prayer. Amen. Amen. Amen.
very much for that, Sister Delicia. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. She would buy hands for a word of prayer tonight. Dear Lord, thank you for tonight. We ask your blessings on us all as we go into your words again tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Welcome again, everyone, to Revelation 2007. What nights do we meet again? All right, and what's our motto, everybody? Oh, y'all, oh, come on now. What's our motto again tonight? The more you Amen. Now, how many of you are a little bit tired tonight? Let me see your hands. Well, if you are, they didn't wait upon the Lord, she'll what? Renew their what? Strength. So our strength would be renewed uh, after tonight and even during the night, I guarantee you. Now, this Sunday night, we will talk about God's law, and if you're here for the first time, you have that lesson now, and that will be for Sunday night. How many, in fact, are here for the first time tonight? Let me see your hands if y'all. Amen. Amen. Give me a hand clap for everybody. All right. We have several heads here for the first night tonight, and uh, that will be for Sunday night. If you did not get a lesson, because I understand we, we've been running out, if you did not get one, just follow me in the Bible tonight and on the screen, and we'll be all right. We had a lot to come Tuesday night, and I guess folks got happy with the lessons, and uh, they run out, they ran out. But anyhow, uh, we'll work it out, amen? So let's work this thing together, make sure everybody gets the lessons that they need so that we can study God's Word. Is that all right, friends? All right. Take 60 seconds to greet somebody tonight. Behind you, in front of you, greet somebody. Uh, just take a little while to greet somebody tonight. Amen. Amen. Take a little while to greet somebody tonight. And uh, we'll take it from there. Just want to remind everybody, let's try to fill up this middle section as much as we can. Uh, uh, as we go on. If you say where you are, continue, but we want to fill up this middle section and then work on this. But if you said there already, uh, we're glad to have you and uh, just feel comfortable. Amen? Uh, do we have any pastors here tonight? Any pastors in the audience here tonight? If so, uh, stand on up. We want to recognize you. Any pastors? It's in the audience. Okay. Well, the other pastors have been coming. We welcome you. We, we know you're here. You're here. Uh, God bless you tonight. We want you to know that after next week, when everybody? After next week, we will go into the second half of this Revelation seminar. If you come faithfully, the second most thrilling half, we will graduate you. The Bible will be yours, but most of all, most of all, you will never be the same, amen? amen? The second half, if you made it through this first half, then you can make it through the second half. Amen. And after next week, we would have made it through three weeks. Can you believe that? Amen. Time is going a little too fast, and we still got an awful lot to cover because the devil has, the devil has tricked folk an awful lot, and we plan to expose his tricks night after night after night after night. Amen, friends? All right. Uh, we have some gifts here, I understand. Some gifts. Let me see. They gave me some names, and I got my hands here and there, and hopefully I can... Okay, there it is. Uh, Harold Moore. Come on down, or come halfway. We have somebody to meet you. Amen. All right, we have a gentleman here.
Pastor, these are some tough questions. <laughs> One of the questions would ask, is suicide a sin? Can you still go to heaven? Before you answer this, drinking, whiskey, chewing tobacco,
the Lord ought to be able to use some of us to bring out at least half of that. Well, y'all are quiet. How long, how long you guys been living here in Memphis? See, I've been living here now for about a year. And I've already got folks to talk. Amen. How, how many, how long you been living here? All right, I'm expecting a lot of folk. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I just, I just think the whole city, friends, should hear some of this stuff. I'm serious. Night after night, sometimes I feel bad. I said, Lord, I thank God for the folk who come in, but I know thousands need to hear this. Don't you know that, friends? God is good, isn't he, friends? And his word is good. And we're about to get into it. Let's have a word of prayer. Dear Lord, thank you for your word tonight. Thank you for your people who have come here tonight. Some of them, dear Lord, had to go through today and didn't think they were going to make it tonight. But thank God you brought them out. Thank God they got the victory and they came. And Lord, now I ask that they will not be disappointed. As they hear your word, I pray that their hearts will burn within them. May they know that you are real. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Tuesday night, what did we learn? <laughs> what did we learn Tuesday night? Nobody said we learned a lot. Well, we learned that hell will be the whole world on what? Fire. On fire. It means you look outside, is hell burning now? What else did we learn? We, yeah. I'm telling you, friends, it's a trick. Amen. And we learn that forever and everlasting and eternal in the Bible does not always mean time without end. We proved it, and we learned that God is a fair judge, and we learned that the wicked will burn until they become what? Ashes. Ashes. That's Malachi 4, verse 1. Jot it down for those of you who are here for the first time. And Psalms 37, verse 20. Jot that down for those here for the first time. And we found out that even the devil will not burn forever, but will finally burn the ashes. That's in Ezekiel 28 and verse 18. Jot it down, friends. It's right there in the Bible. And we found that Romans, in Romans 6.23, we found that the ways of sin is what? Not eternal life in hell, but the way of sin is death. Hell is called the second death, and hell brings that about. It's not the burning of hell that's forever, but the result of hell which is forever, and the result of hell is death, and the wage of the sin is what? Death, and the death will be eternal. Once you die, you're not coming up again until judgment day. But no, that will be your judgment day. That's it, friend. That's all she wrote for you. Amen. How many of you appreciated that subject, even though it was new, but it was true. Amen. From God's word. If it's in the word, it deserves to be what? 
lesson tonight. Revelation 22, verse 13. Revelation, this is a good one tonight. If you don't have a lesson, don't fret this. Follow me in the Bible. Revelation 22, verse 13. Follow me in the Bible. Take good notes. You'll be all right. Revelation 22, verse 13. Let's pray. Dear Lord, bless your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Revelation 22, verse 13. I done already got hot here, friends. I need to take off my suit coat. Is that all right? Amen. All right. There you go. What does the Bible say? Let's read it together. I am the beginning and the what? The first. All right, who's talking here? Jesus says that I'm the one started it, and I'm gonna finish. People talk about how the world's going how's the world gonna end? It's not gonna end by nuclear. It's not gonna end by a bomb. It's not gonna end by George Bush. Jesus said, I am the Alpha in the Omega. I started it, and I'm gonna finish it. Does that make sense, friends? So. How will the world end? Jesus said, you follow me along and you'll see. Uh, the coming of Christ is mentioned how many times in the Bible? Just to see if you're studying. 500 times or 2,500 times. How many say 500 times? Well, you all are studying then. 2,500 times the coming of Christ, amen, is mentioned. That means it must be very important. In the lesson, if you study it, you will find, you found that the Jews got mixed up on the first coming. That's right. And they ended up crucifying Christ. Now the devil is playing tricks in this generation and trying to confuse folk on the second coming. Thank God tonight we're going to be clear on that. Is that all right? Yeah. We're going to be clear on that. Uh, I don't know if you read it or not. It was on the internet. But concerning the rapture and secret rapture and all that, and we're going to talk about it, one lady was killed because she saw these bodies floating up in the air while she was driving. I believe her husband was driving. And she thought it was a rapture. And she immediately took off through the sunroof of her car, jumped in the air, thinking she was going to be caught up, and ended up dying. She thought it was a rapture, friends. We found out later that those were nothing but blown up sex dial dials floating up in the air. And she thought it was the rapture. Friends, it pays to know your Bible. Amen. It'll save your life to know the Bible. Amen? Amen? It'll save your life to know your Bible. One TV preacher said, Christ is going to come and convert the whole and folk just clapped, thousands of them. What's wrong with that statement, though? The whole world has never been converted. Jesus hasn't been able to convert this whole world. Somebody has to go to hell, amen? amen. <laughs> I'm afraid it's not me, but somebody's going to hell. Nobody has ever, the whole world is not going to be converted. Some folk are going to be lost. When Christ comes, some folk will be lost and some folk will be saved. I pray that we are saved. Amen, friend? Amen. Now look at Revelation verse 8 or chapter 8 and verse 1. Revelation chapter 8 and verse 1. We're going to talk about all of this, the secret rapture, the coming. We're going to get clear on all of this tonight. Revelation 8 verse 1. And when he had what? There was silence in heaven about the what? Friends, why is it quiet in heaven during this time? This is talking about the coming of Christ. All heaven is empty because at this time, at this verse, all heaven has come down here to get us. All of them want to come down here to get us. Heaven is empty for the space. 
a human trying to get to heaven in a rocket, it'll probably take him years upon years to get there. He had died before he, he made it, if God allowed that. So actually, God is dealing fast with us. Three and a half days is actually fast with us. And then we have three and a half days to get on back to glory. There's going to be a whole bunch of sea on the way back up there. We'll be going where no man has gone before. It'll be better than Star Trek, the next generation. Are you with me, friend? We'll be seeing all of this is like a little tour guide, seeing how God created this planet and that planet and this solar system and that solar system. We're just going to be going, traveling up there, traveling, having a good time. We're going to be saying, Lord, I can't wait to get to heaven because what I'm seeing now is so good. It's so good. And so by the time we get to heaven, we're going to almost want to break those doors down to see what heaven is all about. Because everything is going to be so good during those three and a half days while we're traveling back up there. Don't we serve a good God? <laughs> now, friends, let's go to Revelation 1 7. When Christ comes, how many folk are going to see him? Boy, you all been studying this, right? Amen. Revelation 1 verse 7. Behold, he coming with clouds. What does the clouds represent? It? And, oh, you're been studying. He coming with the angels here. And how many eyes you see him? Only the rich eye. Only the poor eye. Only the spiritual eye. You know, you got some groups talking about only the spiritual eyes will see him. No, the Bible says every eye. What does every mean in the Bible? It means every. It means all. Amen. That means every eye will see him when he comes. Now, what does that do to the secret rapture theory? It, it, it knocks it out. It exposes it because the secret rapture theory, although it may be very popular, does not teach that every eye will see him. Are you with me, friends? It teaches that Christ will come and all of a sudden, Christians will disappear. Should what? Overtake you 
coming as a thief in the night only in the sense that his coming will surprise the world. He's not going to tiptoe his way here. Christ died publicly and he's coming back publicly. He is a king of kings, right? And how many kings do you know when they come in, tiptoe their way in? No, kings come announced. If President Bush came here, it would be announced. He has secret service men here, bodyguards all over the place, scoping everything. Are you with me, friends? When Jesus comes, friends, it's going to be a big deal. It's not going to be secret. Jesus died for us, he's coming back for us, and it's not going to be secret. Are you with me? All right, let's go on. Let's go on. Now look at Psalms 50 and verse 3. The Lord is excited to get us. He died for us, and he's coming back to pick up the groceries. He bought us with a price, amen? And he's coming back to pick up the groceries, and he's not going to be ashamed of his groceries. Psalm 50, verse 3, right in the middle of the Bible. I like this, 893 in the seminar Bibles. Psalm 50, verse 3. What does the Bible say? Our God shall what? And shall knock. Uh-oh. Boy, what is it? The Bible says our God shall come and shall what? That doesn't sound like a secret rapture to me. Are you with me? And if you read the lesson, you'll find out that, uh, well, you can read this right in the Bible. Look at it. A fire shall what? Devour the point in verse 3. And it shall be very what? Now, what does tempestuous mean? Stormy, turbulent. Is there anything quiet about a storm? Bang! Boom! Bang! It doesn't sound quiet, does it? All right. It doesn't sound like a secret rapture theory to me. Let's move on. Let's go on. Let's go on. Matthew 24, verse 27, first book in the New Testament. 1439 of the Seminar Bibles. Matthew 24. Let's go on. Matthew 24. And what verse does that everybody? 27. What does it say? For as the what? Lightning coming out of the what? East and shining even unto the west, so shall also the coming of Is there anything secret about lightning? No, friends. And Jesus coming is compared to lightning. I'm telling you, friends, when he comes, everybody will know about it. Drop down to verse, uh, look at verse 26. Look at verse 26, and what does it say? Matthew 24, 26. They notice we're talking about the secret rapture. And it says that they say, behold, he's in a secret chamber. Believe it or not. That means anything with the word secret attached to it, you better run from it. It said secret, did it not? You better run from it, friends. There'll be nothing secret about the coming of Christ. Are you with me? Now look at verse 30. Look at verse 30. And then shall what? Of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the what? Moon. And they shall what? Coming. Of teeth. 
let's stick to rapture theory right here. Yeah. He that is what? They would rise first and then first. 
But get this, friends. The good news is one day Christians will fly. One day the Bible says Christians will be caught up. Friends, don't get caught up in the things of this world too much. Then you won't get caught up in Jesus. But if you don't get caught up too much in the things of this world, one day you'll be caught up to meet him in the air. So will the true Christ meet us or will we be caught up to meet him? Friends, if I'm not, if somebody said Christ is here, I'm going to look at my feet. And if I'm not rising up, or if I'm not running, I'm going to say, that's not Christ. I'm either going to be rising up, or I'm going to be running. If somebody tells me that's the Christ, if I'm not doing those two things, that's not the Christ. Amen. I don't care. I don't care how smooth he talks. I don't care how many miracles he does. That's not the Christ. Now, since we're talking about the resurrection here, will we have bodies in heaven? When the Lord gets us, will he give us new and true bodies? Will we recognize each other? Will we have bodies in heaven? Number 11 gives the answer. Number 11 of the lesson gives the answer. What did you put there? Will we have bodies in heaven according to what you read in the Bible, number 11 of the lesson? We will. How do you think folks will be able to recognize us? Sometimes we've been watching a little bit too much Casper the Friendly Ghost. We, we are not getting mixed up with Hollywood and Hollywood, amen? Two different things, friends. When Jesus rose from the dead, did he have flesh and bone? What does the Bible say in Luke 24, 39? Luke 24, 39. What did the Bible say there? You can tell me if you don't want to turn to it. You know you get the lesson. Luke 24, 39. What did it say? Jesus told Thomas to do what? Touch me, for a spirit hath not what? As you see what? All right. Now somebody said, Brother Preacher, the Bible says flesh and bones should not inherit the kingdom of heaven. Well, friend, the Bible doesn't contradict itself, amen? amen. So the Bible said that, you know, it doesn't mean what you think it means. It really means, that you study it, that if you are controlled by flesh and blood, you're not going to heaven. You have to be controlled by the Spirit of God. If you are controlled by your flesh, you know you're not on the way to heaven. You got to be controlled by the Spirit of God. Are you with me? Amen. But as far as new bodies, we will have new bodies. Job said, in my flesh, I shall see God. Is that all right? Amen. Now let's continue on before we go to the spring. Now when Christ comes the second time, will his feet touch the earth? No. We will be caught up to meet him. Amen. Amen. But there is a in the Bible that has confused some folk. Zechariah 14 and verse 4 and 5. Now that's found on page 1387 of the Bible. Now I want you to see this because this is what folk will try to use and it's going to deceive many folk. It's good to know what this is all about. Zechariah 14. Give you a few seconds to find it. Zechariah 14. Christ came the first time as a babe in the manger, right? He's come the second time as king of kings, right? Now, let's read. Let me show you something here. How many of you have it? All right, all right. Don't get discouraged. It's a little small book in the Bible. We're going to give you time. We're going to give you time. Bible says in verse 4, and his feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives. Folk are saying, what? His feet going to stand? This is talking about the day of the Lord. Because in verse 1 it says, the day of the Lord cometh. But you have to read on. Because if you don't read on, you might think his feet are going to stand. you got preachers now saying, some preachers saying that Christ is going to come. He's going to set up himself in Jerusalem. And the Bible does say here, his feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount of what? Which is before Jerusalem. But what folk are getting mixed up is, they don't know which coming this is talking about. Look at verse 5, the last part. And the Lord my God shall come, and all the saints with thee. Now the second time when Christ comes, is he 
coming with the saints and with the angels. The second time when he comes, he's coming for the saints. This says right here, he's coming with the saints. When will Christ come with the saints? That means he's coming a third time. Folk read this and get mixed up between the second coming and the third coming. But actually he's coming a third time with the saints. The second time he comes for the saints with his angels. The third time he's coming, he's coming with the saints. Look at Revelation 20 before we go to the screen. And this is where he comes with the saints, which would mean it's his third coming. Revelation 20. He's actually not coming with the saints until after the thousand years of Revelation. And we'll talk about that in the future. But Revelation 21. What does the Bible say in Revelation 21? Verse 2. Let's look at verse 2. When I, John, saw the Holy City, what? Coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride and door for a husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold the what? So that means God has come again. And he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself will be with them. Now by the time John sees this city coming down, God's people by this time are in the city. God's people are. In the chapter before, the wicked people are outside of the city. And this is all after the thousand years and so forth. So what we read about in Zechariah 14 didn't have anything to do with God's second coming. It was his third coming after the thousand years of revelation when God himself will be with us. Is that clear? Amen. But the second coming, Christ will never touch this world. If you don't get anything, get that. The second coming, Christ will never touch this world. Christ will not come in secret. Every eye will see him. And either you're ready or you're not. Let's go to the screen. Amen. We might get them one or two lights here. What did they say about the manner of Jesus' return to this earth in the Bible in Acts 1, 9 through 11? That he will what, everybody? Return and what? All right. He didn't leave this world in secret, friends. He will be what? They saw him what? They saw him depart. He will return in a what? Wow. He left in a what? Wow. All right. He will be what? He was flesh and bones when he left. Same way. He's coming back the same way. His ascension was what? Literal, personal, personal, bodily, and visible. His coming will be the what? Keep that in mind. How did John tell us? Help us, Jesus. How did John tell us Jesus will return? With clouds, which means what? All right, you're beautiful. What are these clouds? Angels, amen. Thousands of angels are going to empty out heaven to come down here to get us. They're excited to get us. Are you excited to be God? All right. Who will see Jesus when he comes? Every eye. Don't be fooled, friends. Every eye. That knocks out that secret rapture theory right there. Who will come with Jesus at his rapture again? Stormy. I like this text here. 
It says the Lord shall what? Roar from on high. He shall mightily roar. He will give a what? A shout. And a noise shall come even to the ends of the earth. Christ has come. That ought to wake some of you tired folk up tonight. Amen. And it will be accompanied by a trumpet blast. A voice and a shout. Trumpets blowing. Voices and shouting. For that's going to be a great day. And the dead will be popping out of their grave. And the first face they'll see will be Jesus. And it almost seems like an immediate thing. Are you with me? They will be raised incorruptible and immortal and caught up into the clouds to do what? Boy, I want to be able to fly one day. How about you? I don't know about you, friend, but if I see my feet being caught up, I won't know what to do with myself. I say, I can't believe it. I'm actually, whoa, I made it. Jesus, I made it. Look at this. My feet are actually these same feet that ran into people sometimes are actually raising up. Uh, Friends, and deceiving millions. He cannot create a rock, but he certainly knows how to 
Christ. Why doesn't God give the wicked another opportunity to repent after the rapture? They're lost because they what? But have pleasure in what? Friends, folk hear the truth and still don't want to believe it. You know that? Some of us are stubborn sometimes. Stubborn. Thank God for those who not. What threefold glory will be manifested at the coming of Jesus? The glory of who? That's going to be a lot of glory, friends, a lot of brightness. Will you be able to stand it? What will Christ the rider on the white horse and his armies do to the nations of the rap at the rapture? Give them a second chance. Smite. He's coming to deal with sin this time, friends. He's coming to deal with it. And it's going to be a most glorious day for those who are ready. And the crowning purpose of Jesus' in return is what? To take us home. Is that all right, friends? It's going to be a reunion of what? It's the blind will be able to what? The dumb will what? And sing. The lame will what? That's going to be beautiful, friends. There'll be no more what? That's going to be beautiful, friends. What does Paul call the second coming of Christ in Titus 2.13? He calls it the blessed what? Friend, the blessed hope that we should love to hear about the coming of Jesus. What can we know for certain about Jesus appearing? Know that it is what? Near, even at the doors. How will people be rewarded at Jesus' second coming? Give every man according as his work shall be. Will this coming be a surprise to everyone? Yes, for such an hour as you think not, the Son of Man comes. That's why, that's why we need to stay ready. We need to stay, we need to stay ready with our suit coat, suitcases already packed up. Are you with me, friends? The big question tonight, if he should come tonight, would you be ready? How many of you need special prayer tonight to make sure you're ready for Christ to come? We need to get our houses in order because either he's coming or we will die before he comes, which means he already came for us in so many words. Let us pray. Dear Lord, thank you for the hands that have gone high in the air for you. These souls here tonight could be anywhere, but they've heard your voice. They want to hear your word, and they want to be ready for you when you come. I pray your special blessings upon them that they will not let anything stand in their way between them and their salvation. I ask, Lord, you give them all the strength that they need to follow you. I ask that you give them all the strength and desire they need to break any habit that they may have that may be enslaving them. Please, Lord Jesus, give them strength to follow you. Give them strength, dear Jesus, to follow you all the way. Give them your Holy Spirit. Give them your love and your joy. And may they know that as they put you first, that you have their backs. Greater is he that is within me than he that is in the world. Thank you, Jesus, for dying for me. And thank you, Lord, because I know you're coming back for me and your children. Let all God's people say, Amen. Amen. Let's do our quizzes for tonight, and then we'll let you go home, get you out of here before 8.30 tonight. Let's do our quizzes. If you do not have a quiz up below, raise your hands high. Let's cut the lights back on. Uh, raise your hands if you do not have a quiz up below. Fill them out. We're going to do our quiz, and we're going to let you go home so you can come on back Sunday night for Sunday night. Uh, matter of fact, all of next week is going to be some powerful subjects on next week. Matter of fact, we want to deal with Sunday, the law of God on next Tuesday.
Tuesday we're going to deal with God's mark. And on next Thursday we're going to deal with who tried to change God's mark. So that's going to be powerful. Amen. Amen. Let's fill out the quiz envelopes. All right. Are we ready, friends? I don't know what it is about Thursday nights, but you all seem tired on Thursday nights. Maybe because it's going to approach the end of the week and your body is telling you beginning to shut down and let you know you need a rest. Is that all right? <laughs> We deal with yes and no for the night. Yes and no for the night. Just put yes and no for the night. When Jesus returns, everyone will see him. Yes or no. All right. Definitely. Question number two. Jesus' feet will not touch the earth at his second coming. Yes or no. Somebody talking? All right, I thought I heard something. Maybe it says babies up here. Okay, three. Those who made no preparation, the wicked, for the Lord's return, will be destroyed by the brightness of his coming. Yes or no? Will be destroyed by the brightness of his coming. Yes or no? Question number four. Satan will counterfeit Christ's return by appearing as an angel of light. Is that yes or no? This is going to be one of his biggest tricks, by the way. <laughs> One of his big, big tricks. I'm going to have a bag here one day in the seminar and I'm going to pull out all the tricks of the devil. Yeah. Question number five. Jesus' main reason for returning the second time is to what? Destroy the wicked. Is that yes or no? All right. Are we ready?
anybody really, but they're going to be caught in the crossfire because they want to continue to follow the devil. Amen. All right, response question. Does the lesson make, does this lesson tonight make sense to you? If you agree that it was biblical, put it next to box number one. All right. If you learned something new from God's word tonight, put it next to box number two. All right, think you get ready for me. I'm glad think you get ready. Amen. All right. If Jesus Christ is your Savior and you want to be ready to meet him in the air and live with him and all your friends and loved ones eternally, put an X in box number three. Amen. Fill those envelopes out. We can keep record, track of attendance, see how well you understand the lessons. And Deacon, y'all can uh, come forth and pass them. Boy, all right, there you are, okay. Okay, y'all think it's not as fast as it used to be. What's going on here? What's going on here? <laughs> all right, all right. Let's give our deacons a hand clap. Thank you for coming. All right, all right, amen, amen. And if you have any money or donation, put an envelope and just seal it up. And we appreciate all the donations. This seminar, believe it or not, has cost thousands of dollars because you just can't get stuff like this in a regular church service with all that's included. You just can't get it. I just want you to know that right now. This is the best thing going on in town as far as as far as some deep Bible subject. I might as well be honest with you. I'm not bragging, but I'm just telling you. you can't in a lot of places, am I right, friends? But all this information is free to you. You ought to thank God tonight. It's free to you. God bless. Let's stand, everybody. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for tonight. If anyone in here has not accepted you, I pray they'll accept you now. I pray they'll ask you to come to their lives now. If they have a habit, I pray they'll say, Lord, take it away from me now. If they are in a situation they don't know how to get out of it, I pray they'll say, Lord, deliver me now. If the Bible is born to them and they can't quite get into it, I pray, Lord, that they'll pray, Lord, help me to appreciate spiritual things now. Help me to be born again. Help me to be excited about your word. Now protect your people as they go home tonight. Bring us back on Sunday night as we deal with a very important subject on Sunday night. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus.